is the voice of Lewisham. This is the voice of Lewisham people. We've come here today to show what the ordinary, decent, reasonable citizens of Lewisham think about their borough being turned into a battleground by the fascists and by the National Front. My friends, today this message will go out from Lewisham. We are a multiracial society. Not just words. Lewisham is a community where people of all races live and work together quite happily. National Front candidate for Deptford at recent by-elections has been Richard Edmonds, a teacher sacked from Tulse Hill School under pressure from parents. When asked recently why he thought blacks were inferior to whites, he said, I don't know, I just hate them. The National Front are unashamed of their vicious race hate policies, although they pretend to be a respectable political party. Meanwhile, local people opposed to the Front's attempts to create racial conflict are subjected to thuggish violence and intimidation. Martin Webster, the National Front's activities organiser, recently said, where we are strong, we are putting a lot of psychological pressure on immigrants. We are telling them we do not feel they should be here. And he added, yes, we are a racialist party and we are respectabilizing racialism. Basil Manning and Mavis Clark of the North Lewisham Project. I mean, our window, for instance, has been broken in the past 13 months twice. Now, the first time we had absolutely no evidence that we could have, uh, you know, direct evidence. We could feel or think that that it was, uh, you know, through any kind of racial, uh, any kind of racial attack. Uh, in the interim period, we had the window dogged with NF. We had stickers put on the window regularly, National Front stickers. And then finally, a, a, an electric iron was thrown through the door with the sock and a note was done, actually saying uh, why it was done. These are the leaders of the National Front. John Tyndall, chairman. Formerly a member of the National Socialist Party, modelled on Hitler's Nazi party, and an organiser of an illegal military body he called Spearhead. He is now famous for saying, the Jew is like a poisonous maggot feeding on a body in an advanced state of decay. On the extreme right, Martin Webster, the Front's national activities organiser and the man best able to put across the Front's respectable image but he is being quoted as saying, we are busy forming a well-oiled Nazi machine in this country. The, the important thing for, for people to recognize is that uh, the National Front is not only a racialist party, they are more than that. They will use racism and people's latent racism uh, for their own fascist ends, but they are quite clear about their designs for Britain. They will use the emotions which are there on the issue of race uh, for their fascist ends. Therefore, it is not something which is only about fighting racism. It is something about fighting a cancer which is out to destroy, you know, our very, our very style of life. And that is the lesson which white people must hear clearly. Lewisham like many other areas, has suffered from the process in which people are put second to economic forces. The rundown of employment, poor housing, coupled with the disasters of high density estates, noise, inadequate play facilities for kids, and a general disinterest with political parties which don't meet the needs of working people these kinds of things 
all make fertile ground for racism, fascism, and the National Front. I want to say finally that I've been fighting racism for 20 years. It's the most boring in its manifestations. It grows where there's unemployment, it grows where there's ignorance, and just as Hitler used the Jews as a scapegoat to blame all the ills of Germany onto them, so people in the National Front and the National Party are trying to do the same. We reject it as bogus lies, and we stand up here this morning as Christians to say that we're going to work for a society which can repudiate that, which can move away poverty, which can take away elitism, which can get Britain back into a fair and decent land to live with for all its people. So as a Christian bishop this morning in exile from South Africa, I bring an act of solidarity. I think because Deptford is a, a, a sort of working class area where people are not really having life uh, that, that well. Um, they're in need of certain things, they're living in high-rise uh, buildings. And then they're not very happy about their conditions here. And I think um, the National Front use this because um, uh, working class people are not really thinking about um, why. I mean, white people actually believe that the few black people who live in an area like this are responsible for the deprivation and the lack of facilities and the poor housing in the area because they've been fed with it over a long period of time. You know, the, the, the whole scapegoat thing in terms of we're one better off than those people. We must aspire to be one class higher. All that, that kind of thing. And the National Front, therefore, very astutely, is using the very ingredients which is, the stage has already been set. You know? when, when Barclays Bank announces that it has profits of, you know, hundreds of millions of pounds in a year, what economic crisis are we really talking about? Who's economic? And to turn around to these people and say, you know, just hang on another 10 years. Maybe we'll sort it all out and the kind of facilities you really like to yeah. see. It's really, it's not on. It's just not on. And uh, in the meantime, the front can come in and say, yeah, we are the party, you know, who are really interested in, you, in, 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 in your causes. We are the ones who are going to do something and we're going to do it because we put Britain first. Yeah. We will put your interests first. The choice of Lewisham by the National Front for the march on August the 13th was no coincidence. Taking advantage of the publicity created by recent arrests of black youths in Lewisham, they had stepped up their activity in the area. On July the 23rd, National Front supporters were arrested for attacking a march protesting at the Lewisham arrests. In the Lewisham 24 situation, and particularly the the uproar within the community on the whole about the style of those arrests and surveillance, you know, the use of cameras yeah. and all that, uh, meant that uh, within Lewisham there was a, a tremendous amount of feeling. It seems to me that the National Front would have marched somewhere, but they chose Lewisham because the feelings were already running high, so they, they knew that they were going into a sensitive area right from the word go. At their press conference before the march, Martin Webster said publicly, we intend to destroy race relations here. This then is the organization that was allowed to march through North Lewisham on August the 13th. The only chance today is National Front, nothing else. leaving the column. We want you all to behave yourselves, take orders from your stewards, take orders from the police, behave yourselves. This is a lawful and peaceful demonstration. I don't want a single National Front member or supporter to be arrested. So no back chat with the opposition, no leaving the column to fight, and no chanting except for National Front. Have you got that? On August the 10th, the All Lewisham Campaign Against Racism and Fascism
held a press conference. Belgrade was formed in January this year on the initiative of uh, Lewisham and Deptford Trades Council. And the ascending committee was elected, uh, comprising of representatives of each of the groups. After us formed of uh, black and Asian groups, uh, voluntary organisations, political parties in the borough, I think all pretty well represented, um, trade unionists, uh, the church, and is open to individual membership. The All Lersham campaign against racism and fascism had been formed to do two major things. Firstly, to combat the racialist propaganda of the National Front and the National Party. Secondly, to conduct a long-term campaign to positively promote the idea of a multiracial society. An educative role, tackling racial prejudice in all the areas of everyday life. In education, at work and in the community. The organisation had been formed long before the fascist march and intends to remain in business for a long time to come.
We shall overcome. The National Front and those forces will not prevail. And I believe your presence this morning is an act of solidarity. I thank God for that. I stretch my arms out to you. And let's go forward with confidence and pride so that we can really make Britain a society that we all want to see it become. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, the next speaker is Roger Dodsey, the Mayor of Lewisham. We will not discriminate across grounds of race, religion or colour. Our battles are one battle, whether they be the battles of black people, of white people or of any other denominations. This message must be clear to everybody today. You've come here to show what the reasonable, sensible voice of the people of Lewisham is saying. Today, we will go to Lewisham and we will show in a peaceful, sensible way what the real majority, the silent majority of the people support. I thank you for coming today. I thank those people who have come from a long distance. and its supporters should be allowed to go through Deptford. Well, the reason I think that the Outcraft March should go through Deptford is that the Outcraft organisation, as you can see and as you've heard, is an all-embracing organisation that has support right across the political spectrum, the religious spectrum, and amongst the community organisations. And the Outcraft organisation is the real voice of the people, so far as the sort of community that we want to live in. Um, 
by the police action, what it means is that the people of Deptford, the heart of Deptford, won't be able to see the alternative viewpoint that's supported by the overwhelming majority of the people in Lewisham. And this, I think, is very, very wrong and very sad. Um, also, I feel that by the police action, it could be construed that although the police have vehemently denied that they wish to take sides in this issue, it could be construed that the police, in fact, are taking sides, and unfortunately, they seem, if that is what one wishes to construe, it seems as though they're taking sides against the organisation which has the overwhelming support, and indeed is the one organisation which is advocating a policy of non-confrontation and non-violence, which again is very sad. And this could, and I stress it, could possibly encourage some people, ordinary citizens, who feel disgusted by this National Front March and who would have been prepared just to join in a peaceful demonstration, it could make them think, well, if the police are taking sides, perhaps I need to do more than just marching on a peaceful demonstration. This, again, I think would be very, very sad. You, you are not interested. This is the control, right? That's what it is. But it can't stop. No, check them. Not many old people, are there? Our argument basically is that if the National Front are allowed to use our streets, then in fact we should be allowed the same privilege. After all, they are our streets and we should be allowed to march on them. Mr Mayor, on the directions of the Commissioner of Police of the Metropolis, I ask you to use your good offices and direct your procession along Algernon Road, the route that was agreed with the organisers and laid down by the Commissioner of Police. If you fail to do so, my officers will have no alternative but to arrest those people who fail to comply with those reasonable directions. Thank you, Commander Randall. I must put you on behalf of the Outcraft organisation and on behalf of the thousands of people on this march now discussed that this march has been terminated at this point and that in fact it's being redirected into Algernon Road. We would ask that you consider once again that you give permission to this march to proceed along the route that was originally agreed between yourself and the local organisers of the Outcraft organisation. And we would also point out that permission has been given today to the fascists, to the National Front, to march down the streets of Lewisham. I'm asking you, as the first citizen of the borough, on behalf of the Outcraft organisation, which has organised this peaceful demonstration, that you allow us the same rights to march along the streets of Lewisham on behalf of the overwhelming majority of the people of Lewisham who have no truck whatsoever with the National Front views. Thank you, Mr Mayor. All I can say to you is that if you care to make application to march on another day, every facility will be granted to you. On this occasion, I regret to say that my instructions are to direct you along Elgin Road, and I cannot shift from those instructions. Commander Randall, I understand your point of view, I understand your position, the difficult position that you and your officers are in. This is a peaceful demonstration. The demonstration will comply with your request, although I must officially lodge this protest to you on behalf of the organisation. Thank you, Commander Randall. I see that your comments are passed to the Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you for your The position of Alcaraz is as follows. We are asking this demonstration now to come forward and to disperse in Algernon Road because Alcaraz is not prepared to be directed away from Deptford, which is the point at which, which is the point at which the fascists are being allowed to assemble. Could the march please keep moving slowly forward? The violence on August the 13th started at 3 a.m. when bricks were thrown through the window of Alcaraf Chief Steward Mike Power. One of the bricks narrowly missed Mike Power and his wife who were asleep. We want you all to behave yourselves, take orders from your stewards, take orders from the police, behave yourselves. This is a lawful and peaceful demonstration. I don't want a single National Front member or supporter to be arrested. So no back chat with the opposition, no leaving the column for the fight, and no chanting except for National Front. Have you got that? 
the site in Railway Grove, which Alcaraf had originally had permission from the council to use, was now isolated, together with adjoining Achilles Street, for the arrival of the National Front and the formation of their march. This police camp at Hilly Fields, Lewisham, gives an idea of the scale of the operation to enable the National Front to march. Despite every attempt by Lewisham Council, including a visit to the Home Secretary and a High Court hearing to get the march stopped. A crowd estimated at up to 8,000 gathered in the Clifton Rise area to protest at the National Front March and to try and prevent it from setting out. At the time of the demonstrations, Police Commissioner McNee made a statement which was echoed in all the media. He said that the events were a result of an orchestrated and violent attempt by extremists to halt the National Front march, and that counter-demonstrators were committed to use violence whatever form the National Front demonstration took. Tony Kelleher, branch secretary of New P London Playworkers, and a playground leader in Deptford for some years. The, the people in the, in, the, in the part of Clifton Rise I was in and the people who moved down the street with me to the top of Pagnell Street were, some were black, some were white, some were aged under 20. There were middle-aged people, there was elderly people. I remember there was, there was one fellow who I would have thought was in his late 50s was talking to the coppers about why were they protecting these people? Didn't they see that they were very similar to Nazi Germany? And that he saw this copper had this, this ribbon, I don't, I don't know what it meant. And he said, you know, if you had fought in a war against fascism, what you're doing protecting these people? And, you know, and to say it was just the left and it was carefully orchestrated is not true. And we got there around about half past one. And I'd, I'd, I'd never seen as many black people actually on a political demonstration. different cordons in, in, at different times they were, they were bringing people in, in and out of the area and when they were just standing there nothing was nothing was happening you know I mean we were just standing there waiting to see what the front were going to do and the police were just standing there and it was always the police by by attempting to push people one way or the other and you know that started any kind of violence that, that, that may have happened you know I think that most people just actually want wanted to actually stop them but the, the sheer numbers and the presence and the tactics of the police didn't allow that to happen. The, the things I saw being thrown were actually laying on the ground around these derelict houses in, in, at, the, at the top of Pagnell Street. And 
the people around me were throwing things, not, not, in, in, not sort of premeditated, but just in frustration and anger at the police, you know, just protecting the NF. Tony McKay and Erwin Eversley of Lewisham. At the time, the police were trying to split up Split everyone up into yeah, a little divide. Divide everyone up into little sections so that then, yeah. if the National Front did come up, you know. Oh yeah, that's why. That's why they were shouting at the police for sort of like protecting, you know, people that even the police knew were wrong. You know, how yeah. can they? How can they be right if they're doing something like that? If they're carrying banners with, you know, National Front is a is a Nazi front or whatever it is. I mean, the National Front is something. Racialist from. The important bit of South East London is Lewisham High Street. It's here. The centre of it is the clock tower. We're here. We've stopped them going through to cut them. We've built the Nazis the biggest defeat they've suffered so far. Now, if we hold this area, we hold Belmont Hill. They must have crawled back through the sewers they came from. Yeah. Yeah. Anti racist demonstrators gathered in the clock tower area of Lewisham to stop the National Front passing. In fact, the NF had been diverted. Their march was soon terminated by the police, unknown to the demonstrators. The police then began to systematically break up the demonstration, at first with cordons and a horse charge culminating in Belmont Hill, and later by driving demonstrators down Lewisham High Street. police had guarded them all the way to Lewisham and when we got into Lewisham the police were just trying to break up all the other groups yeah you know tr trying to scatter all the other groups and just guarding the National Front mm. now why couldn't it be the other way around because the people who they were scattering belonged belonged in that area the others you know weren't welcome They just come charging in. Mm. That was just before they got the shields out, wasn't it? Yeah. Just and they just they started. The they was just kicking, kicking out and everything. I mean, some people were saying, "No, no, I don't, I don't think the police would do that." But they did. They just came in, and that was what took me by surprise. I didn't think they were going to start poking at my eyes and kicking me in the in the crutch and things like that. But they did. Yeah, they did. It's bad that that had to happen. And that's why a lot of people got aggressive towards the end. Because they had had enough of the police running around, whacking this person and whacking that person, especially if they hadn't done anything. Mm. I'm sure the police were out too, that, you know, they had been asked about all day and people had been pushing them this way and that way and throwing bricks at them and everything. I'm sure people did take weapons down here and I'm sure they did they did do things to the police. But they were just they were just a few that were down there just just for that purpose. Hmm. I mean they weren't the the majority of the people. The majority of the people were down there to stop stop the National Front from getting getting through.
National Front had been diverted before reaching the clock tower area of Lewisham. They were routed down Cressingham Road and into a small car park where, unknown to demonstrators, they were allowed to hold a rally. What follows are excerpts from speeches at that rally by Andrew Fountain, National Front Vice Chairman, by Martin Webster and John Tyndall.
in a brotherhood with dignity and hope. <laughs>